Hi there, today's story comes from the book Haunted Donegal by Madeline McCulley and it's called Mamour Gap's Ghostly Travellers. In the mid-1800s, many parts of Donegal were isolated, lonely places, none more so than the Mamour Gap on the Inishon Peninsula. The Urus Hills separate Dunry and Lenan, and the Gap of Mamour was thought to be the sole gateway through these hills. The steepness of the rocky terrain made it a tough climb for any traveller and an insurmountable challenge for the revenue men. It's therefore easy to believe that Urus was once known as a Pachin Republic. It was an ideal place for distilling whiskey and Pachin. In any case, it was believed that the people of Urus were a hardy bunch and not the type of people with whom the authorities would meddle. The rocky path, as it was then, rose to 700 feet and the loose rocks and scree slopes towered over the lonely track. If any brave or foolhardy man or woman happened to make their way up there at night, they made sure to stop at the Holy Well, where St Columbanus is believed to have vanquished the water dragon Gillama. There they would pray for their safety on the journey. Many filled a bottle with the holy water from the well and sprinkled it as they walked along, praying that their feet would keep them on the right path and the holy water would protect them from harm. People rarely ventured there in darkness as it was said to be haunted, although some claim that the illegal patching makers spread stories of ghosts and hauntings to keep people away. Maybe there is a bit of truth in this claim, but the following story of a ghostly encounter is one that has been handed down. A man called Dan was setting off from Lenan to go to a fair in Derry with the intention of buying something for his patching still. He did not want to advertise his mission around the townland since there was some jealousy amongst the patching men. So he set off very early during the hours of darkness. As was often the case, at four o'clock in the morning the mist hung low at the top of Mamore, obscuring the summits of Crocara and Racton Moor. It swept down to the path itself and it was an eerie enough place to be walking alone. As he entered the misty heights, he was beginning to regret not having taken his wife's advice that he should avoid Mamore. He was nearing the crest when he became aware of the tramp of footsteps on the shifting gravel behind him. He felt relieved because the presence of other people would be welcome, or so he thought. He knew that part of the path was narrow and treacherous, and he stopped to allow the others to pass by. If he was hoping for some companionship on the journey, he was disappointed, for one by one... Seven men emerged out of the mist and passed him, going in the same direction. He greeted them, as was his way, but they ignored his greeting, none of them uttering as much as a word. Now that was unusual, for it is known that country people are friendly and hospitable, especially in Donegal. He was disappointed, but prepared to set on his way again. Shortly after the seven figures had passed, another man approached from behind and called out a greeting. Where are you after for the day, he asked. I'm going to the fair in Derry, replied Dan. Aye, we're going that way ourselves, said the stranger. He paused for a moment, then added, Did you ever sail in yon la? A few times, but I'm a landsman. I'd rather feel solid ground beneath me, said the Linan man. What about yourself? I've sailed around the world's ocean for many a year until I came to Lost Willie. Did you ever happen to hear of a ship that was wrecked on the Swilly Rocks? I did, answered Dan. Sure many a ship's been wrecked there. Indeed they have, but the one we were aboard was called the Golden Fleece. Now Dan was a bit sceptical, for he knew that the ship mentioned had gone down in 1817. But the more he quizzed the man, the more he believed him. By the time they descended Mamore and reached the gentler road of Drum Across, the sky was beginning to lighten. As they reached the top of that road, he heard a cock crowing in the farm below. It's a fine sound to hear in the morning and time for a rest, he said, and stopped to take out his tobacco and pipe, meaning to offer a smoke to his companion. But when he looked around, there was neither sight nor smell of the man he'd been conversing with. Nor was there any sign of the other seven who had been walking about thirty feet in front of him in a group. He called and shouted until he was hoarse, but the only answer he got was the echo of his own voice. When he reached Bonkrana a few hours later, he stopped to visit an old relative of his. He began to relate his experience and was very surprised that the old man accepted it without any dissension. The Swilly isn't called the Lake of Shadows for nothing. Sure, if you've ears to hear, you'll hear what you heard this day and a lot more, for, for there's hundreds of wrecks lying beneath its waters. But what do you make of it, asked Willie. All I can say is that few expected to meet their deaths here, but that's the way it was and there are many restless souls. All you can do is remember them in your prayers, that's all they're looking for. 
The Lenan man stopped at the holy well on his way back home and left eight stones on the prayer cairn for the eight spirits he had met on the lonely gap of Mamor. Thank you. Bye-bye.